Holly Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company, and I am going to do this diamond solitaire ring for you today. Uh, that's what I'm calling it. It's a 10 millimeter Monty that is basically bezel set in some seed beads, and then created a band so that UA you can actually wear it as a little cute ring. If you need any of the materials for this solitaire ring, you're going to go over to here on the left hand side, there's a little drop down that will list all the different materials that we use. That way you can click on them, purchase from me online if you need to. Or you can always make a list and take it to your local Potomac Bee Company as well. So this diamond solitaire ring you can do with all different colors if you want, um, but it's going to be using a 10 millimeter Rivoli. Uh, we noticed that Swarovski is not making as many of their 10.7 millimeter Rivolis anymore, so we decided to start making our own, also because they fit really nicely inside of a cup button. And we have them in all different colors. They're a 10 millimeter, so unlike Swarovski's 10.7, they're exactly 10 millimeter in diameter. And I'm going to be using this magic blue color, and I used the magic orchid here in the middle of the example. The cool thing about the magic colors is when you hold it and look at different ways, sometimes it looks blue, sometimes it looks purple, sometimes it looks green. So I'm going to be really playing up kind of those colors in the design. You could also, if you do want to make it really look like a diamond solitaire, you could also use the silver backed crystal or the plain crystal if you did want to see through a little bit. I'm going to be holding the crystal in place with some 11 oz seed beads at the base, which then we're also going to use to do our little herringbone band here. For the 11 O's, I use this eucalyptus color, the Duracoat Opaque Eucalyptus in the Mayuki color. I'm sticking with that Duracoat because that way I know it's gonna stay on and have a nice color to it. And I'm doing the Opaque Dark Orchid. And we're gonna be using that as our base and also to finish off as our band. To set the Rivoli in place, I am using two different colors of 15 O's. It just kind of makes it pop along the center and the sides. I'm sticking with the same color of 11 O's that I used in the example here, which I really love. It's the opaque smoke gray in the 15 O. It has kind of a gray shimmer and shine to it. It's almost like a soft silver. And then rather than using that um, silver lined salmon there, I'm going to be using some of the gold beads here. So it's galvanized gold that I'll be using in addition to the smoke colored beads and then my purple along with my Rivoli. The whole thing we're going to string on some 0 .006 wildfire beading thread and I'm stringing it on the green color. It worked really nicely for my band here. You can hardly see the thread going through the middle, but you could also decorate if you wanted with some little beads in between so you don't see that thread at all. But I'm going to be using the green as well for the thread that I'm working with to do our example of the solitaire. We are using a size 12 beading needle. You can use a 10, it just make it a little bit stiff as you're going through and reinforcing around the top. So a 12, 11 or 12 is a better idea for you. I also am working on a bead on it board surface here. So I have my bead on it board. Um, that's a really nice working surface that's gonna make it easy for you to kind of pull up and to get your beads in place, as well as a nice bright surface for you to work and design on. If you don't have a bead on a board, bead mat, just a nice working surface. That way you have a nice clean start to whatever you're working on and with. I also have some pliers here, some bent nose pliers. I use this to flatten out the end of my thread because I usually use a thread zap two to be my cord cutter at the very end. I'll thread, uh, cut the cord basically off the roll with the thread burner and then also burn down the little edges of the thread with the cord cutter or the thread burner as well. To get started, we are going to start with about three feet of our beading thread, and you want to put that on your size 12 needle and make little piles of your seed beads. Because we are making a ring, we're actually using very few seed beads in the grand scheme of things. You're only using a couple 15s. However, the same setting and the same linking could go to make a bracelet or a necklace where you had these all along the bracelet. So always take the ideas and the examples that I do, make different things out of them. I like to really inspire rather than just teaching you how to make this exact project. So it's a good idea and I'll show you basically how you can link them together as we get started. At the very base of the project here are gonna be some seed beads that we're basically making a circle out of. We're gonna be using 16 seed beads as our starting circle. 
I have on my three feet of beading thread a stop bead. The stop bead is just one of the beads from my previous project that I'm not going to be using on this project, but they help me to know exactly where I am starting and stopping and hold the beads in place. To get started, we are going to put those 16 seed beads on my needle here. And these are all 16 of the 11 O's. And I'm doing my four groups of four to keep track of that 16. Once I have that circle or that line of 16 beads, I want to make it into a circle. To make it into a circle, I'm going to go right before or right after the stop bead, before the first purple seed bead there, and I'm going to string through about six or so, six, seven, eight beads. When I pull that thread, it's going to pull it into a nice little circle for you here. Whatever bead you're coming out with, we're going to make this one of our corners. To create the corner, the beads that we're using on the side which I'll change it up. I was going to use um, the silver still on the top, but we'll change it up. I'll use the gray here on the side. So I'm going to do five of my 15 O's in the gray color. So it doesn't really matter what bead you're coming out of. You're just going to pick up five beads of your 15 O and we're going to sew back through that 11 O that your thread is coming out of in a circular motion. So the thread is coming out. I add my five 15 O seed beads and I'm going to sew back through that same 11 O bead in a circle so that way my thread is coming out in the exact same spot it was before I put on the beads. I'm then going to take my thread and needle, sew through four more beads. So there's four more beads. When I'm coming out of that fourth bead, five more 15s go on and then repeat that pattern of sewing through that bead that your thread is coming out of in a circular motion. So those 15 O's just get put right above that single bead. Turning my project slightly, giving a nice tight pull so there's no thread exposed here. Sew through four more beads to make another corner. Basically we're creating little corners. Five more beads go on. So back through that same bead that your thread is coming out of, skip over the stop bead, making sure not to sew through it, and sew through four more beads. And you can see when I'm working, I like to turn the project in my hand to make sure that it's always comfortable to hold. Once I'm coming out of my last bead there, my fourth bead, five more of my 15 O's go on. Sew back through that same bead again that my thread's coming out of. And at the same time, I'm just going to sew through the next three beads in line. Give a little yank and pull your beads in close to the corners. So you can see that little design here that we've created with the corners having those five C beads. We're going to take advantage of that uneven number by sewing through the first bead here that you would have been coming out of to add your 15 O's. And after sewing through that first bead, we're also going to sew through the first three of our 15 O's that we put on above that bead. That's going to bring me out and create almost a little triangle out of those 15 O's. To create the bezeling, we're going to be adding six more 15 O's between the little peaks or between the third bead in each of our little corners. So you want to pick up six of your alternate color of your 15 O's and sew through in the next corner of your beads. So whatever space the thread is coming out of, that's what you want to make sure to go in that same direction. and sew through. Once your thread is coming out there, you're going to add again another six seed beads. 
and I'm making sure that all of this stays to the top of the project. So you can see I'm kind of pinching it, that I'm pushing downward. I want to make sure because it is going to bring those corners inward that all of these beads stay right on top of the project. You can see so they're curving up towards the top. Switching over then to the next corner. Six more of my gold 15s go on. I'm going to go to the next corner and pick up that third bead to create that little point. You can see I haven't put my Rivoli in yet. I'm not going to do that until basically the very end when we're going to tighten it up. I have my last space here to put six more C beads. And I'm going to sew back through that first 15 that we were coming out of before we put on our six beads. Again, pressing the middle down, that brings that kind of cone shape up and has that bezel set. Now I get the fun opportunity of dropping in my Rivoli and pulling in those sides. When I pull in the sides, the Rivoli is not going to sit exactly securely tight because I still have one more step to do. When I'm coming out of that 15 on the corner, I'm then going to go through those first six gold 15 O's that I add in. Come out right after that gold 15. Skip over to the next set of six and sew through those as well. So I'm not sewing through that corner silver bead. I'm just sewing through my gold beads. Grab your next set of six. You can see I'm kind of pinching the Rivoli in place. Move that stop tail out of the way. Pinch that in. Come on over then to the first starting sign here. Add in those last six seed beads to my constant seed bead train here. And you can see a little bit of thread exposed here on the corners. We're going to pull that tight. I'm now going to go through those first six that I originally had gone through and not through that corner bead. This is going to connect all of them, all of those six beads here. I get to push my Rivoli down now and pull nice and tight. And that's going to trap that Rivoli right in the middle there to tighten it even more. So back around that grouping of six one more time. So I'm sewing back through all of those lines of six. That's going to pull the Rivoli in nice and tight so there's no risk of it popping out at all. It's also going to give you a chance to reduce the amount of thread that you see. Sometimes if it's getting tight around there, you kind of have to wiggle it through. And once you're bringing it out then, you're pulling nice and tight and that will get all of those 15 O's nice and set inside there and you have that nice little solitaire setting. So we have our corners that are popping up here. You just give them a nice little tug so that they sit nice and in place. And then we have our baseline. So the baseline is pulled along the back there with those grouping of our 16 beads and they have the stopper bead. I'm not going to worry about that stopper bead because I'm going to get ready to actually do my band for my solitaire right off of the same thread that I'm working with. To get started on the band, when you're at the top and you're coming out of one of your corners of your gold beads, you're going to sew through the corner 15 out. Bring the thread through. And then also sew down through two of the beads on the side of one of those kind of triangle corner pieces. At the same time you're coming out of that two beads, sew through one of the corner 11 O beads. And that's in that dark orchid color. 
So this way you're coming out of one of your corner beads that your group of five beads sat on top of. From the corner is where we're going to actually set our ring so it sits nice and on a diamond. To start our band, which actually is a simple strip of herringbone, we're going to be starting with two beads. Add two beads onto your needle. And just like we were doing to add the 15 O's, we're circling around that same 11 O, which is going to sit those two beads right on the top, kind of separated out to the side, almost in a triangular shape. Take your needle and thread up through the first of that orchid that was added in that group of two, and that's going to force those two beads almost to lie down right next to one another. Pick up two more beads and sew down through the bead on the left hand side. You're then going to take your thread and needle, sew up the two beads on the right hand side. The first row of two and then the second one that you just, the first one of the second row that you just added. And that's going to pull those nice and tightly to sit right on top of one another. Again, two beads get added. Sew down, coming out the top right, add your two beads and sew down one bead on the left hand side. Pulling the beads in tight then, I'm going to take my needle which is coming out basically row two on the left and go up to the same bead straight across and sew up two beads. And my needle and thread then is going to be coming out right at the top. Of that fur of that last bead that we added on the right hand side. The reason I like to do this stitch on the actual band is because it has a lot of thread going through it and it's really durable. Adding my two beads coming out the top right bead, so down the left bead, pull those beads that you just put on in place, then switch from the left side to the right side and up through two beads. Give a nice tight pull after each one so that way you don't see very much thread exposed. Again, continuing on, coming out the top right bead, add two beads, go down one bead on the left hand side. That's going to pull those two beads in place right on top of one another. Skip over now from the left side to the right and sew up through that bead right next to it, right across from it, as well as the right hand bead that you just added. And pull nice and tight. So that's going to get our herringbone row there started. It's almost in a square stitch as well since it's a single row of herringbone. And I'm going to continue on to make whatever band size I need. If you have a small uh, wrist here, you may end up only doing about 20, or a small finger rather, you may only end up doing about 26 or so rows. If you have a bigger ring finger, just try it on as you're working with it. You can see exactly which finger you want to wear it on and try the band on. The nice thing with beading is you can always kind of take the needle off and slip it out um, and actually kind of temporarily sew it together with the other side, which I'll show you how to do. But I'm going to continue on making the band doing that same herringbone style of stitch. Once you have your strip of your herringbone um, little collection done here, it may be an inch and a half, it may be two inches, depending on the side of, size of your wrist, or I'm sorry, your finger, I'm so used to saying wrist. What you're going to do is get ready to basically test it if you're not sure of the size or finish it off if you are. To finish it off, you're going to be bending the herringbone portion back and we're going right into the diagonal corner of the crystal here across from the crystal where we have the band starting. We're going to sew through 
that 11 O seed bead there, that purple, that dark orchid purple, making sure that I'm sewing in on the right hand side and that my herringbone stitch is coming in on the right hand side as well so that way my band doesn't twist. I'm then going to sew back through the left hand bead or the left hand side of that herringbone, which now as I hold it becomes the right hand side. Give a nice tight pull and that's going to pull those beads together and kind of have that seamless look to it. Taking the thread and needle, go back across that last row of your herringbone stitch, straight across coming out on the left and then going over to the right. Give a nice tight pull and that's going to tighten up all that thread. Go through that 11 0 seed bead again. So I'm going through that corner point 11 0 seed bead and bringing my thread and needle out. Once the thread and needle is out on the side, I'm going to simply take off my stop bead and tie my two thread ends together. If you want to, because it's a ring and it's going to get a fair amount of wear and tear, you can do a little super new glue on the knot. All I'm going to do is burn my thread ends down after doing three square stitch knots there. Grab my thread burner, burn down, leaving about an eighth of an inch on each side of your thread. Kind of push that thread towards the back of the project. Or the inside rather of the ring and then taking that thread burner directly on top of that strand and burning it straight down making sure you're not burning through the knot or through the thread underneath once you're done that burn your ring is completed and the cool thing about this solitaire ring like I said you could do it in all different colors you can do the band in silver and gold you just want to use Duracoat and it's a really nice simple ring if you do it in silver and gold it really will look like that diamond solitaire effect that we were going for that it has that nice sparkle and shine and you can pop it with gold and silver so it's a mixed metal on the sides but the cool thing about it is it really doesn't take that long um, I did everything on film with you guys. You can see the different version. You can make them for grown-ups or um, kids alike. If you do want to make it a little bit bigger and a little bit bolder, you can actually just increase the size of the Rivoli rather than doing a 10 millimeter. Excuse me, you could do a uh, 12 millimeter Rivoli. You can also build up the sides here. So where you connect to that corner bead, you could connect to the second after the first bead and actually connect with some more 11 O's. That'll pump out the side, and rather than making it look like a diamond solitaire, it'll make it look like it's actually a set stone and have a little bit more of the actual seed bead look around it. But I really love this simple ring. Like I said, you could go in and actually make it into a bracelet as well. When you take the herringbone piece, you're only gonna do about three or four rows and then start your next circle. Do your circle, finish off your crystal, and then do another little herringbone piece. And that's gonna connect the whole thing together. You could do a bracelet with these little links and do a little tennis bracelet style with the little solitaires all linked together. If you get a chance to get some of our 10 millimeter volleys, we have them in great colors and great selection that you'll be able to kind of check out and make a lot of fun with in their groupings and see all the different colors that they come in and really have fun making this diamond solitaire ring as well as some of the other fun jewelry that I've made out of the 10 millimeter Rivoli's as well. You can always search the channel, just a little heads up. There's a little magnifying glass uh, below the header channel. So when you go to the very header page and you hear that little music, there's a little magnifying glass. You can search by the materials that are used in the project there, a little helpful hint. And that way, if you have extra Rivoli's or you have anything else that you want to use, you can search there for the type of bead that you want to see and all the different videos will 
pop up for you. Also, if you want to stay informed for videos like this solitaire ring, as well as others on new product updates, new patterns, new designs, you can always subscribe to this YouTube channel and also share it with a friend um, if you think they would like it as well. You can also stay connected with us through our Facebook page, as well as our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making, and ask to become a member there. And we're happy to interact with you guys, give ideas, and really you get a great opportunity to see all of our different fans and friends and all of their cool designs, their awesome things that they made, and really get ideas, share ideas, and really help people solve problems and answer questions and give opinions. So it's a really great forum to communicate. As always, you can purchase the materials from me online back at the beginning of the video or underneath this video at the little descriptions part of the video. Do the little show more button drop down and that'll give you links to them as well. If you get a chance to make these little diamond solitaire rings, have fun. They're kind of addicting. I have three done now and ready to get some more done and more to wear in groups and on all different fingers and give to friends. Great little Christmas present too, a little Christmas design for somebody that's in your life also. As always, as working, have fun and thanks so much for watching everybody.